snow. What is this? Good morning from Kleinshire. I knew there was snow, but March 31st, I'm ready for it to be over. Where is spring? I've actually been up a few times overnight because I'm boiling down our second run. Look at that. This morning, while I do chores, I wanted to talk about hay. If you are a homesteader and you are raising your own beef steers or goats like we do, one of the questions that you ask yourself is, should I make my own hay? Should I pay somebody to make hay on my land? Or should I devote that land to some other use, rent it out, and simply buy my hay? Part of the reason we decided to make our own hay was simply the land that we inherited uh, from Rosemary's parents, uh, we took over a whole farm. They had rented the acreage, but we knew we wanted to make a living off the land. It was it, 19 tillable acres, 18 and a half, I guess. And the question is, well, what do you do with that number of acres? It's too small for growing row crops, um, but it's too large just for produce. So what we did is we took the most level five acres and we've made a produce field out of it and the balance has been hay field slash grazing. Uh, it's the land we inherited. The question is, well, what do we do with the 12, 13 acres that aren't devoted to produce? And naturally the answer for that is, is hay. Part of the consideration is, well, what land do you have available to you? If you're a homesteader with just a few acres and you want to grow out a beef steer, obviously you're going to be buying your hay from somebody. But if you have the land, then other considerations come into play. I think one would be, well, how many animals do you want to raise? If you're just raising a few beef steers or you have a horse, um, is the cost of the hay equipment worth it or should you rent out your acreage? But if you want to grow out a herd, if, if you have several beef steers or a small herd of goats as we do and you have the land to make the hay, well then you need to start asking what does the equipment cost? Is it worth it? Can I keep it running? And perhaps it makes sense for you to make your own hay. If I weren't making hay, my little tractor would probably be enough to work produce. But the fact of the matter is, I need to be able to power a hay bine, I need to be able to power uh, a baler, and you're looking at needing at least 30 some horsepower probably 40 some horsepower in order to do that, even more if you want to run a disc bind like what I run now. You're talking, well, if, if you buy used and you're willing to be patient and fix it yourself, you're talking $4,000 to, if you want new, sixty, seventy thousand dollars $70,000 for a tractor that's big enough. It's a pretty major investment. Besides the tractor, as I was saying, 
you need something to cut the hay with. And over here, parked in the pole barn behind the boys' bikes, I have my New Holland disc vine. This used ran $4,000. Again, a major investment. You need a hay rake behind the bikes. You have the hay rake here. This rakes your hay into rows. And you're talking, well, used, maybe six, seven hundred dollars if you look for a deal. And then finally over here, you see my New Holland square baler with the kicker and the two hay wagons. Square baler, another few thousand dollars used in the hay wagons run nearly a thousand dollars each. So to make hay, in short, you're talking about an investment of thousands of dollars and that's for used equipment. Equipment that if you're like me you buy on auction and who knows if it's going to run. I, I have a few hay binds actually in the what I call the graveyard. <laughs> I purchased them. I thought they'd work. They ended up having problems that have made them difficult to fix. If you're going to make your own hay, you have to be willing to work with this. You have to be able to purchase the equipment, uh, keep it running. And then, of course, there's the matter of the cutting of the hay. Depending on your field, uh, you're cutting anywhere from one to four times. I've tried to cut three times. So from 12 acres, if I get good cuts, I'm making about 1,800 bales. Uh, I'm certified organic and I can charge six dollars for a second or third cutting bale. So there's there's the potential uh, to make a little money and to recoup some of that cost depending on the size of your herd. Uh, you know it's 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 an investment and it may be worth it, but it's not going to be worth it for everybody. Tarsi's so mean right now, my horse, he'll bite the steers and there's plenty of hay here, but <laughs> you wouldn't think so given the way he protects it. You know, I was thinking uh, there are some other considerations too. When we homesteaded in North Carolina, we had to buy hay and I remember how there was one gentleman who would deliver, but the quality of his hay was not always the best and you never knew quite what you were going to get. There was another gentleman where I could go and pick up the hay, but uh, two round bales in the back of a pickup truck, 40 minutes, uh, other side of the city, it, it, wasn't, it wasn't very fun. So there is definitely... Um, a nice aspect to making your own hay. You know it's there, you know the quality of it. I'm not gonna say it's good quality because I've had some issues with getting a good window to make hay, but at least you know the quality and you know it's in the barn because you put it there. Not all hay is created equal. The steers and the horses I'm feeding some first cutting hay, which is stemmier, a lot of fiber, and lower in protein value, simply because I'm maintaining them over the winter. I mean, the steers could definitely eat second or third cutting hay and grow faster on it, but I want to save as much of that hay as I can for the goats because the goats are in milk and they need more protein. So the best hay is reserved for them right now. The first cutting hay goes a lot of places. Hey piggies. Cyprian is replenishing the bedding for the pigs. You wanna say hello? Hello. 
pigs will take this hay, you can see what they did with their old bedding. And they will burrow into it, they'll stay warm, and they'll eat some of it too. It's, it's their fiber so they're not just eating grain. Calves. <laughs> you want in the video too, Max? Is that what it is? I'm surprised these guys aren't complaining more. They're in the process of weaning. They used to get a bottle in the morning. Now they only get a bottle in the evening. Are you shy? show you some of the hay that we feed to the goats, the premium second and third cutting hay. You can really see the difference. This is what you're looking for in hay. It's a beautiful bale of hay. When we break it, you can see it was dried nicely. It was not overworked. You can see the, the leaves and the green clover flowers in there. Just lo lots of leaves and seed heads. This is, this is where the protein is, so it, it, look, look at how soft it is. It's not stemmy like the first cutting hay. There's a lot of protein in this hay, and it is mold-free. This, this is beautiful hay. These mothers definitely need the higher protein hay. We don't grain them at all apart from the few that we milk. So all of their nutrition comes from that hay. One more reason it's so great uh, to have our own hay. We know where it came from. I'm able to choose the premium quality hay and, and use it here. I'm able to use the lower quality hay for the pigs for maintaining the horses and we'll reserve some for mulching the garlic as well in the fall. It's, it's a glorious thing to have your own hay, but I think the assessment of this video is that whether you should make hay or whether you should buy hay depends on a lot of factors. So what works for us here on our homestead uh, isn't what's going to work on every homestead. Well, this is Franz at Kleinshire. I need to finish the chores and get in for breakfast, so I'm gonna sign off for today. We're having adventures, we're exploring things. Subscribe, follow along. Thank you and God bless.